Thank you, everyone. Hope you're doing well. So today I would like to welcome you to uh, um, our chapter 13 uh, and uh, uh, what I'll do is later. Let me, uh, uh, Rajit, uh, do, um, is my uh, screen uh, legible and uh, am I audible? Yeah, we can hear you. I think you okay. just need to um, uh, widen your slides. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm just doing now. Yeah. Okay, I hope, I hope that's fine. So Hare Krishna everyone. So uh, uh, today's chapter 13, which is also called uh, Kshetra Kshetra Gnya, Vibhav uh, Yoga, uh, Yoga. And um, it also means nature, the enjoyer and consciousness. Let's begin with a exercise that I'm going to invite you to do. And uh, uh, if you have a pen and paper, that's fine. Otherwise, you could just you know put it on the screen itself. So if you could write a note to your younger self, what would you say in three words? How will you inspire him or her? How will you uh, give her or him power of, I mean, empowerment? How do you really uh, impart the wisdom that you have acquired the, all these years? So if, it just, if you could just take a few moments and uh, whenever you're ready, please do write on the chat, what would you write to your younger self? So, so, so we have... Uh, uh, Raji say, live, forgive, and love. Very nice, Raji today. Thanks. Ashmita says, love. Learn to listen, says Roshni. Follow own path with conviction, that's Anna Maria, and you have used more than three words, that's five. Darshana says, love, respect, forgive. Kamini, thank you for life. Anju, happy. Nita says, show compassion to other living entities. Uh, maybe a little more than three words there. Uh, Nilt says, we're all connected. Bhakti Kataria says, appreciate, relax, understand. Gayatri, be brave, respectful, and loving towards everyone. <laughs> Ajay, Ajay, as a bit of humor, it wasn't me. <laughs> Jigna says, live with humility, Mansi. Embrace, learn, grow. Dharminda says, reflect, chant, forgive. iPad says, go for it. Love my Gita. Wow. These are really, really good. So uh, amazing, isn't it? Um, so um, why, have, why did we do this exercise? Because uh, most, of, most often during life, we get a lot of reflection. We do, we have quite a lot of wisdom. And oh, we also have... <laughs> coming invest in Amazon, very, very relevant in today's times, for sure. So um, so one of the reasons why we, we are doing this exercise, uh, to do, uh, this reflection, is really to um, uh, touch upon uh, the, uh, the theme and the mood of chapter 13, which is a lot about uh, uh, wisdom. Uh, so if you were to look at uh, chapter 12, in chapter 12, we finished uh, the Bhakti Yoga, that was uh, chapters uh, 7 to 12. And uh, from chapter 13, we are going to be moving on to uh, the Yoga of Wisdom, and uh, which is Jnana Yoga. And um, it's, it's quite essential that, um, uh, so there's going to be a lot of uh, things that chapter 13 is going to talk about, which is um, 
a little complex. So this is probably one of the most complex, um, you know, um, chapters in the Gita because there are many concepts that are explained by Krishna in response to questions from Arjun. So uh, if you do have your pen and paper, please do keep them ready as we uh, as we move on. So uh, can someone tell me what is the acronym for uh, chapter 13? It begins with wise questions, items of knowledge, super soul, and enjoyer. So the theme of uh, the acronym for chapter 13 is WISE, and uh, it's um, quite uh, appropriate, uh, appropriate because it's the first chapter of uh, the Yoga of Wisdom. So, um, uh, and um, uh, WISE questions are questions that Arjuna asks, and then um, uh, once Arjuna asks those questions, then uh, Krishna explains the process by which we can become knowledgeable and the qualities that we need to have to be able to become knowledgeable. Then he explains uh, what the super soul is. And uh, then we also understand uh, who is the enjoyer, who is the supreme enjoyer, and what has been some of the uh, confusion that we have had with respect to understanding what's in the material world and what's in the sp uh, spiritual world. So we, we will unpack this uh, slowly. So let's begin with uh, the wise questions that um, um, and uh, that, that Arjuna asks in the first chapter, uh, in, in, in the first verse. So he says, uh, my dear, uh, um, oh my dear Krishna, I wish to know about Prakriti, nature, Purusha, the enjoyer, and the field and the knower of the field and of knowledge and the object of knowledge. So if you were to look at this, you will see that uh, there are six, um, um, six topics and six questions that Arjuna has. The first one is Prakriti, which is nature. The second is Purusha. Uh, the third is the field. The fourth is uh, the knower of the field. Uh, the fifth is knowledge. And the sixth is the object of knowledge. And uh, let's really see what the um, answers to this would be. Now, this one, um, this particular slide is going to be a little heavy. So I'm just going to take a few minutes to explain the topics that comes uh, as we go along. So the first one is Kshetra, which is the field of activities. So the way um, it's described in chapter 13 is uh, it's the material body. And this is made up of the various elements uh, you know, you know, that, we, that we know. And this is also the temple of Krishna. The second uh, concept is the Kshetragnya, which is the knower of the field. And the knower of the field is either the soul or the super soul. And we'll come to the super soul in, uh, in a while. The soul is the knower of the body, which is basically us. So we are the super soul. And uh, we did cover in chapter uh, two what our identity is, that we are not the body, we are not the mind, but we are the soul. So that is uh, Kshetra Nya. The third one is Jnanam. And Jnanam is uh, knowledge and uh, the process of knowledge. And um, so this is really the character and the behavior that makes uh, any person uh, knowledgeable. And when we talk of knowledge here, we're talking of spiritual knowledge. The fourth is uh, Nyayam, which is the object of knowledge. So where, uh, what exactly do we, uh, um, uh, do we attribute this particular knowledge to? So it's really the soul and the super soul. And uh, so it says that the object of knowledge and Nyayam is really that uh, the super soul is ultimately to be realized. Uh, the fifth is Purusha. And Purusha is the enjoyer. And uh, the, enjoy the actual enjoyer, as we know, is the Supreme Lord. Although the conditioned souls in this material world, by the veil of Maya, tries to take this position, and we believe that we are the enjoy, uh, we are the enjoyers, although we are not. And uh, the last is prakriti, which is really nature, and that is really the soul's desire to enjoy matter, and this is what binds him or her to the material world. So these are the six questions that uh, Arjuna asks, and uh, uh, in terms of wise, which is really the acronym. Um, um, Kshetra, uh, Kshetra and Kshetra is described in W. Uh, Jnanam is described in I, which is item of knowledge. 
Yam, which is object of knowledge, is described in S, and E, which is the enjoyed, is described uh, in Purushan Prakriti. So um, we will try to unpack this as we go along, um, but please do reflect on these uh, concepts. Uh, so uh, coming to wise questions, so there are two things to really keep in mind. Uh, so uh, the Kshetra or the field is the body, uh, the material body, and Kshetragya is the soul, and uh, that's what we are. The second lesson is uh, we become wise by understanding the six key concepts that we just uh, you know, like, um, went through. Uh, let's move on to the second, uh, which is I, which is items of knowledge. So in this, what Krishna says is um, he explains uh, what is, should be the character, what should be the behavior of uh, anyone to really acquire the spiritual knowledge. So um, uh, can I request somebody to unmute themselves and read this uh, pretty long um, uh, uh, you know, verse, verse? It's, it's actually 8 to 12, so it's actually five verses together. So could somebody unmute themselves and uh, read this for us, please? Hare Krishna, I can do it. Please do, thank you. Humility, pridelessness, nonviolence, tolerance, simplicity, approaching a bona fide spiritual master, cleanliness, steadiness, self-control, renunciation of the objects of sense gratification, absence of false ego, the perception of the evil of birth, death, old age and disease, detachment, freedom from entanglement with children, wife, home and the rest, even-mindedness amid pleasant and unpleasant events, constant and unalloyed devotion to me, aspiring to live in a solitary place, detachment from the general mass of people, accepting the importance of self-realization and philosophical search of, for the absolute truth. All this I declare to be knowledge. And besides this, whatever there may be is ignorance. Thank you, Anamaya, for that. Um, so um, what Krishna describes here are the various qualities uh, that helps us uh, build our character so that uh, we create the mood to be able to absorb the spiritual knowledge. So, uh, so of course, you know, like do, do, do reflect on some of this, and um, uh, it, this also like picks up from uh, chapter twelve, where some of the qualities of devotees are have already uh, have also been spoken by Krishna, and uh, also this is one of the reasons why um, you know humility and pride, uh, pridelessness, you know, is uh, right at the top because uh, Krishna uh, says that humility is one of the key things. Uh, that's required for us to develop, uh, you know, when we want to acquire new knowledge. Uh, so the first step is to say that I don't know. So if you recall, um, one of the things that, um, you know, Socrates mentioned, one of the greatest philosophers, he spoke about, um, I know that I know nothing. And that's what made him one of the wisest because uh, many of the times we think we have a lot of knowledge, but that's probably not the right mood for us to acquire new knowledge. So some of you may also have seen this um, Zen, uh, you know, master who keeps pouring, um, you know, like a tea in a in a in a bowl of uh, in in a cup, and um, and, and the student wonders why is he uh, pouring uh, uh, why is he pouring so much of tea because it's overflowing, and that's when uh, the Zen master says that for you to be able to acquire new knowledge, for you to be able to absorb new knowledge, it's important that you remove, um, you know, like uh, you know the you know the um, concepts and the knowledge that you already have. So that's really something that Krishna talks about in this topic, in this particular uh, uh, section. Uh, he says knowledge is not information. So um, uh, because we are inundated with a lot of knowledge, I could be a scientist, someone could be a uh, astronaut, someone you know would be an investment analyst, etc. But that really doesn't really uh, make you uh, knowledgeable. So knowledgeable is, uh, uh, having knowledge is all about also living in a certain way that helps you get a deeper realization when it comes to spiritual knowledge. It's just not about awareness. It's just not about hearing. It's just not, not about seeing. It's a lot about how you practice, how you apply these in your spiritual practices, in your endeavors. Uh, then as we spoke about, humility is really the foundation to get knowledgeable. And uh, uh, this is something that is also, uh, you know, um, 
you know, constantly, you know, like uh, spoken about. Uh, so for you to really be able to acquire new knowledge, it's important for you to get into the mood of uh, saying that I know nothing. So please give me more. Uh, so I'm going to ask you a question here. So what do you think is more knowledge, uh, more important to become knowledgeable? Is it competence or is it character? So could I just, um, you know, could you just put you uh, put on the chat? So what do you think is more important? Gayatri says character. Mansi says character. Mitesh, iPad, character. Yes. Uh, and indeed, um, that means that also says character. So thank you very much. So it is indeed character because um, a character is what really builds that mood for you to be able to learn now and be able to receive to, to knowledge. Competence is important. Competence, which is about your skills, about your um, um, about your behaviors are important, but they're not as important uh, because you need to you know, build your character first to be able to become knowledgeable. So that's what uh, Krishna says uh, in, um, in uh, items of knowledge, which is the eye of wise. So let's um, go to the S of wise, and uh, here's where we will talk of the super soul. Uh, so could somebody tell me uh, or put on the chat, uh, what do you understand by super soul? So, uh, or what other term have you uh, heard about which you think is a super soul? Would you just like to put that on chat? That means the say super soul is Paramatma, which is indeed true. Uh, Meena says God, higher consciousness, it is, it is Paramatma. And um, uh, let's actually see what um, Krishna says. So can I have someone else to read this out for us, please? Please unmute yourself. Let me to read it out. Absolutely, please. Okay. The supreme truth, super soul, exists outside and inside of all living beings, the moving and non-moving and the non-moving, because he is subtle. He is beyond the power of the material senses to see on to know. Although far, far away, he is also near to all. Bhagavad Gita 13.16. Thank you. Uh, so this is really about the super soul. So who really is a super soul? And um, for this, I'm going to um, ask uh, something, um, ask us to reflect on something that uh, we spoke about earlier. I think Sutta Prabh Prabhu also had um, explained this to us. Um, so uh, how many, how many Krish uh, how many Vishnus do we have? Uh, how many plenary manifestations uh, of uh, Krishna are called Vishnus? Three. Uh, so Meena says three. Yes, indeed three. So can somebody tell me uh, who is the first um, Vishnu? Yes, Gatri. Yes, it is three. So the first Vishnu is the Maha Vishnu, and uh, what he does is to create the entire material universe. Uh, uh, so that's the Maha Vishnu, and he's also called the Maha Tattva. Uh, the second is uh, the Garbodaya uh, um, Kasai uh, Vishnu, and uh, Mina Mataji, you're right. So uh, and and what uh, this particular Maha Vishnu does is uh, they create, uh, they they enter into the into the universes. To help us uh, to help create uh, diversity, so uh, you know human beings, living entities, plants, etc. And the third is uh, Shiro uh, Dakasai Vishnu, and uh, this is really the super soul, and uh, he resides within each one of us in our heart, and he also resides in every atom, in 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 living matter. So, um, so, so that's where uh, the super soul resides. And this is where, as uh, the Mindra also pointed out, uh, the Paramatma. And uh, let's really look at uh, what their um, functions are. So that is the general function and that is a specific function. So let's really see what the general function of the super soul is. So uh, he is the overseer. So he really sees what you're doing. He really sees, uh, you know, how you're, uh, what kind of behaviors you have, what actions you're performing in this particular uh, material world. 
and um, he is also the permitter, which means that uh, he engages in a conversation with you. So one way of looking at uh, the general function is uh, if you look at overseer, you could look at uh, the overseer as a CCTV. So the CCTV has got this umbrella view of you know, what's going on in the world. And uh, even if you are probably uh, uh, you know, tucking in that extra chocolate or uh, maybe you know, saying that I'm going to like sleep a little bit more so that, um, uh, so he's able to really see that. And uh, Ana Maria says, big brother, indeed. <laughs> That's a CCTV and he's a big brother. So he sees it all. Then uh, as a permitter, what, what he also does is um, uh, have this inner conversation uh, with you. So which means that uh, if you really, uh, um, uh, I'm sure you have probably heard about the inner voice. You've heard about this conversation that you really have with yourself. And uh, that really is also one of the roles that he plays because whenever you have this doubt about, you know, like performing a particular action, whenever you have to take a decision, then you do kind of consult someone in a deep within and that's really the Paramatma. So he also plays a second role, which means he allows you to take the right decisions. Um, uh, and uh, he also helps you uh, answer some of the questions about the dilemmas that you may face. The sixth sense as, uh, Absolutely, it's the inner voice or the sixth sense. So those are the general functions and uh, there are uh, th uh, three specific functions which uh, the super soul does. The first one is uh, knowledge. So he gives you the capacity, the ability, the character, the competence to be able to acquire knowledge that you need to be successful in this particular life. Uh, the second one is Smriti, which he allows you to remember things um, that may be uh, in a past forgotten. And it doesn't have to be necessarily things which are belong to this lifetime. It could also be things which uh, you know, belong to some previous lifetimes, which is why sometimes you get those deja vu moments. You get those moments where you say, you know what, I have been to this place, but I can't really place exactly what. Or you know what, I can connect with this particular in, uh, person, but uh, I have just met him or her for the first time in this, in this life. So uh, that's really the power of remembrance. And the third is forgetfulness, which is apohanam. So while he allows us to remember things, he also uh, makes us forget some of the things. Because, um, for example, how many of us really know what, uh, what uh, we have been in our previous lifetimes? Not many of us. Although we do have a lot of regression, you know, therapies and analysis that happens, but uh, most of us, we don't really know. And uh, that is actually a certain reason for that because... Um, uh, Krishna does not want us to remember all that we have done over so many lifetimes because uh, firstly, it's, uh, it's going to be quite impossible for us to lead a life uh, peacefully in this particular world. So uh, forgetfulness is also uh, needed for a reason and Krishna uh, you know, gives that for us as well. So if you look at it, uh, the Paramatma performs a very, 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 sim uh, uh, is a very uh, minuscule part within us. Uh, but uh, he is really guiding and he's really controlling a lot of what we uh, do in this particular world. Uh, we will, I mean, if there are any questions, we will come back to that, uh, you know, towards the end. So, so I'll uh, keep an eye on that. And uh, the last, uh, but not the least, is really the enjoyer. And uh, can I request uh, someone to um, read this out for us, please? Can I do that? Yes, of course. Sir. The living entity in material nature thus follows the ways of life, enjoying the three modes of nature. This is due to the association with that material nature. Thus he meets with good and evil among various species. Yet in this body, there is another, a transcendental enjoyer, who is the Lord, the supreme, proprietor, who exists as overseer and permitter, and who is known as the super soul. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, so if you look at it, uh, you know, there's quite a lot of things, and we will talk about the three modes of material nature in more detail, uh, you know, like in the uh, subsequent chapters. Uh, here, the key thing is to really uh, remember that um, the transcendental enjoyer is the Supreme Lord, uh, but we as conditioned souls have forgotten that. Uh, now, uh, I do have a question uh, you know, that I would like to share, ask. Um, 
So uh, if uh, the Lord is the uh, transcendental enjoyer, then can we enjoy at all? Can we as conditioned souls? So if you say, if you believe that it's a yes, please put a yes. Or if it's a no, please put a no on the chat. Yes, no, yes, yes. Do we have any more? So we can see that there are a few S's, but mostly, uh, mo uh, most of it are S's and a few, a few no's. And, and the answer is, um, it's, it's actually uh, yes, because, um, uh, and, um, and, and what Krishna really says is that um, if you really put me in the center and if you perform devotional service to me, I will provide you, I'll fulfill you, and uh, I'll give you all the wealth and the happiness that you need in this particular world. So, um, However, uh, we cannot be the only enjoyer uh, um, devoid of Krishna. It's important that you do keep Krishna at the center, and then you can also enjoy, um, uh, you know, um, you know, all all the, uh, uh, you know, the material, uh, uh, you know, like uh, um, the material pleasures, like chocolate, like prasadam, everything. So. Uh, what we're going to do now is to do a little bit of a thought experiment and. Uh, uh, what you see there is a door, and that door is what uh, takes you to the uh, to the spiritual world. So on on this side you are in the material world, and um, uh, on the other side of the door you have the spiritual world. Uh, so I'm going to ask you um, um, a, a couple of things. Uh, uh, okay, so so before that, let me ask you: um, um, Would you would you would you like to Sorry, I think I just moved here. Sorry for that. Yeah. So, um, so let me ask you on the screen: uh, How many of you would like to go to um, the spiritual world now? So let's uh, put um, let's have some uh, responses on the chat. Too early? Yes, please. Not ready. Yes, please. Not yet, as I don't know enough. Yes, maybe not. Not ready, not to learn. All right. I think, I think we have a, we have, when the call comes, okay. So um, let's look at these two options. One is um, uh, fulfill all aspirations and then go back to the spiritual world. And the second is uh, go back to the spiritual world now. So we can see that there's a pretty much a combination of, uh, of the responses. Now, let me ask uh, which one is uh, better? Is it one or is it two? One, okay. And, uh, and, and yes, I think uh, that's probably more practical as well because uh, uh, yes, I think uh, we all have this aspiration to, to go to Golak Vrindavan and, um, and we can't wait to go. Uh, however, we have not really completed all our aspirations because we have not fully become detached from this material world. There are some obligations we have, there are some duties that we want to perform. And hence, it's quite important that we need to fulfill all of that. And once we do that, then we go back to the spiritual world. So, uh, uh, and um, uh, because the final destination is still uh, what it is going to be, which is the spiritual world. So, so thanks for sharing those responses. And um, one key thing from an enjoyer and uh, uh, perspective is to really look at um, what is really the relationship that we have with uh, Krishna and what are the various uh, enjoyments that we can have with him. And it's all about building uh, the personal relationship with Krishna. So let's see. Um, there are there are a few, and we will not go. Uh, we will. Um, I'll I'll just share all of them, and then we can see if we have any uh, questions. So we can have various moods in which we build a relationship with Krishna. So um, so you could be Santarasa. Santarasa means that you're completely devoid of all material attachments, and uh, and and you uh, you're fully in devotional service to Krishna. So that's really the first rasa. The second rasa is when uh, you become a servant of the Lord, and uh, that's more in terms of humbleness. It's more of you know being um, a servant of the servant of the Lord. Uh, the third is friendship. Uh, so you see, uh, Krishna as a friend, as someone who supports you, as a spiritual friend. 
uh, you could have a parental, uh, you know, you could, uh, you know, like really worship, you know, Krishna in his infant form, as we all do in um, the month of Kartik, especially. And, uh, and then there's conjugal, which is really the highest form, which, which is what, you know, the gopis, um, you know, like uh, are associated with. So these are really the five relationships. And, um, and what re Krishna really says is that um, you also can be an enjoyer if, uh, I, if you really, you know, like um, follow any uh, one of these rasas. But it's very, very important that you keep Krishna at the center. So... Um, that really brings us to the end of um, you know the summary. So I'm just going to quickly uh, look at. So we looked at um, you know the uh, the wise questions, the six uh, concepts that uh, Arjuna asked, and then um, uh, Krishna unpacked that, saying that you know he uh, gave us a process by which we can be knowledgeable. He also gave us a um, what should really be the character and the qualities uh, you know uh, to to become more knowledgeable. Then he explained to us uh, the super soul and the para paramatma that resides within us. And then he also spoke about uh, our role as an enjoyer and how he's the supreme enjoyer and how we can also enjoy this material world if we uh, uh, put Krishna at the center. So that's really chapter 13. So it is a little complex and, uh, and some of these thoughts and these concepts are going to be explained a little further as we go along in the subsequent chapters. So what the world teaches us is that uh, God is far and seated in heaven. And uh, what uh, the Gita teaches us is that uh, God is near and seated within. So that really brings us to the end of chapter 13. And um, what we could do is we could see if we have a few questions uh, that's come up. Um, let me just see if, I think I did see a question uh, somewhere earlier. But in the meantime, I think, uh, you know, if you have any questions, we, we, we could probably take uh, a couple of them and uh, you can unmute yourself. Hare Krishna, Madan Babu. Uh, yeah. the, the question that I'd like to ask is, you were talking about the Paramatma and um, it, you know, acting as guide for you uh, somewhat. So if you have all these uh, murderers and pedophiles and such like who, who create real uh, trouble for, for humanity, um, why isn't that um, Paramatma sort of helping them? To, to not do those those deeds. Okay, I think I think that's a very good question, and uh, and I think if I were to draw back upon um, you know some of the things, uh, um, uh, so Krishna is there in the para, as a paramatma. Now the question is, uh, do we um, are we aware of the para, paramatma in the first place? So. Um, uh, Krishna is not a doer, so the doer is still us, and um, and uh, he's also given us a free will to make choices. So uh, the question is, do we take the path of liberation, which is really to perform uh, devotional service and uh, uh, move in a spiritual journey, or do we take a path of uh, degradation, which means that you know we do those. Uh, uh, you know those murderous acts, etc. So, um, so action. So Krishna doesn't perform any actions. So all the actions are performed by those of us who are in the uh, the conditioned souls in the living entity, and based on that we uh, get our karmas, and based on the karmas we get uh, actions and reactions, etc. So he would never uh, interfere. The Parampantama would never interfere with uh, your, your behaviors, with your actions. That is still something that you alone are responsible for. And based on uh, the acts that you perform, then you get, um, you know, like a fruit of actions. It could be in the same lifetime or it could be in a different lifetime. So he doesn't really interfere with uh, the way we would like to lead our lives. Okay, thank you. So we did have a question from guy three. So could it affect us in this life if we did remember things from our previous life? Uh, yes, I would. Um, I mean, I would say so because uh, 
um, you know, we uh, do not really know what uh, form of life we were in. Uh, we could have very well been a, uh, you know, like a snake, for example, or, uh, and you don't want to really, you know, contaminate, you know, all those, you know, like realizations and those memories, uh, you know, in your current life. So the key thing is, uh, and, uh, and, and so, uh, as I say, sometimes, you know, forgetfulness is also a balm to the soul. Because sometimes it's really good to forget some of the things because you don't really want to know what happened in your previous lifetimes because there are so many lifetimes that we have been part of. So it's so much more better for us to be uh, just focused on, uh, uh, you know, like um, the human consciousness. And once we're aware of that, also see how we can improve our, um, how, can, how can we make spiritual progress so that we uh, come closer to go, going back to Godhead and uh, try to overcome try to get out of this uh, cycle of birth and death. So yeah, forgetfulness uh, definitely does help sometimes. Although I think my wife may not always agree with me <laughs> when I forget a few things. Madam Prabhu, sorry, Madam Prabhu, can I, can I ask another question if that's okay? No problem at all, please do. Um, this, this is not in, in conjunction to what we've been discussing, unfortunately, but it's something that was discussed last week, and I was just thinking about it. It's Krishna's Leela that we, we, we were discussing last week, okay? Mm -hmm. And if, I'm, if I just can get the concept right, it's his activities, basically. Um, so in that sense, if you've got those activities happening in the spiritual world, right, um, you would then have to have people like uh, Kansa there for him to perform his activities, but it doesn't sort of go hand in hand in the sense that um, Kansa obviously not a great soul, so you have that sort of person in the spiritual world, it doesn't sort of line up. And the follow-up question is that if, if uh, Leela is his activi activities, then surely by creation of the world, as it is the material world, that is also, would that also be considered as, as his Leela? Um, I think I, I, I would say there are probably many, you know, like uh, layers to your questions and uh, uh, I'll see if I'm qualified to answer that. I'll try to answer the, uh, you know, the best way possible. And uh, maybe I'll also like hand it over to Rajiv if uh, he has his, any comments as well. So, um, so, uh, so I think as uh, Sudhapa Prabhu mentioned, uh, you know, the last time, uh, uh, one of the key things that we need to understand is that uh, Krishna is basically uh, the Godhead at home. So, which means that you know, he uh, absolutely is um, transcendental. And uh, I think uh, for us to really appreciate, uh, you know, him, um, you know, we are using our material senses to understand something, uh, to understand, um, you know, his transcendental nature. And that's not always very easy. But he's in this, um, you know, like... Um, uh, state of uh, uh, transcendental, uh, which uh, uh, ness, which is no action at all, and um, it's uh, his plenary, um, you know, manifestations in the form of Vishnu, and uh, and, and the other, other, you know, like um, uh, in, incarnations who re who really, you know, like um, uh, you know, uh, really control their material energy, etc. So um, and even those um, uh, when we when we are to look at those manifestations uh, clearly. Uh, you know, there are some leelas where, uh, you know, um, you, know uh, you would have Kamsa, you'd have like um, you know, Shishupal and some other others who, who, do, who, who do take birth in the material world. And then, um, uh, and then what Krishna does is to come in a certain incarnation and, um, and, 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 and explain to the world, uh, you know, like what, um, you know, that, um, you know, this is not really the right way to really, you know, make spiritual progress. You really need to, uh, it's, it's really about setting up an example. But more importantly, he also comes to this particular world uh, because he really uh, loves his devotees. For, so, for example, if, you know, when Prahlad was, uh, you know, praying, uh, uh, you know, he, uh, he came in the form of Narasimha to do it. So, um, you will find, uh, so uh, when um, uh, they say that when Krishna kills, um, you know, like Kamsa, for example, because Kamsa had, you know, Krishna so much in his thoughts. So, so they go to, uh, they, they go to Goloka Vrind Vrindavan and uh, the spiritual world is very, very different from the, from the way we understand the material world. So out there, um, it's uh, a lot more of bliss. It's a lot more of love. The way we understand the world now and, uh, you know, the way we see that there are, you know, like uh, good people, good people, 